Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta, and today we are going to talk about multicollinearity. Multicollinearity exists when at least some of the predictor variables are correlated among themselves. In observational studies, multicollinearity happens more often than not. Let us try to understand what are the reasons for it. So, if if I say x1 is equal to 2x2, this is a perfect multicollinearity. I say x1 is equal to 2x square, this is imperfect. So in our regression equation, if I specify y is equal to a plus b1x1 plus b2x2 plus b3x3. So here, multicollinearity means existence of a perfect or exit exact linear relationship among some or all explanatory variables. So if I say x1 is equal to 3x2, in this situation, it is very difficult to separate out the effect of x1 and x2 on why? Because they are correlated with each other. The reasons for the multicollinearity are the data collection method may be the problem. Either the design, the research design is poorly constructed or the measurement scheme is poor. The second is constrained on the model or in the population being sampled. For example, in the regression of electricity consumption on income and house size, there is a physical constraint in the population in that families with higher incomes generally have the large, larger home. So higher income, larger homes, they are correlated with each other. Third, model specification, for example, adding polynomial terms to the regression model, especially when the range of X variable is small. An overdetermined model. This happens when the model has more explanatory variable. We, we are having an overparameterized model. We have included more independent variable in the model and this could happen in medical research where there may be small number of patients about whom information is collected in a large number of variables. What are the practical consequences of multicollinearity? Although blue that is a best linear unbiased estimator, the OLS estimators have large variances and covariances make precise estimation difficult. Second, Multicollinearity problem makes a significant variable insignificant by increasing its standard error. Absolute T statistics and P value have opposite relation. Although the T ratio of one or more coefficient is statistically insignificant, R square, the overall measure of goodness of fit, can be very high. So you get a good R square, but uh, there are not uh, the P value of the individual significance are individual coefficients are not significant. The OLS estimators and the standard errors can be very sensitive to small changes in the data. F value is significant, but none of the T ratios are significant. What happens in multicollinearity? Let's try to understand. The T statistics is calculated by considering estimated coefficient divided by standard error. In case of multicollinearity, standard error decreases. So T statistics decreases and P value increases. And so the particular variable becomes insignificant. How to detect multicollinearity? The first is high R square but few insignificant T ratios, which means that F value is statistically significant and the model exists, but the individual p value of the individual coefficients would be greater than zero, which means that the null hypothesis is accepted that the coefficients of regressors are equal to zero. We have already talked about this in my previous video, regression analysis. We carry out are individual coefficients contributing or not, individual variables contributing or not with the help of t-test. Overall, all the variables are contributing or not, that is considered with the help of f-test. And overall, explanatory power of the model is considered with the help of r square. Now here, in the case of multicollinearity, what will happen? Your f-test will be significant, your r square is very high, but your individual, individual uh, p-value of this t test of these variables will be insignificant. Second, high pairwise correlation among regressors. Auxiliary regressions. Since multicollinearity arises because one or more regre regressors are exact or appro approximately linear combinations of other regressors, one way of finding out is x variable is related to other x variable is to regress each xi on the remaining x variables and to compute the corresponding r square. We will see this method, how to carry out this. The fourth is the collinearity statistics. In case of VIF, the value of any variable should be not more than 5 or in case of tolerance, the value of any variable should not be less than 0.2. 
physically they both are inverse of each other if it violates it it indicates the presence of multicollinearity then there is a condition number and condition index condition number is a maximum eigen value divided by minimum eigen value condition in, in index is the square root of k some rule is if k is between 100 and 1000 there is a moderate to strong multicollinearity if it exceeds 1000 there is a severe multicollinearity if condition index is between 10 and 30 there is a moderate to strong multicollinearity if it exceeds 30 there is a severe multicollinearity k and ci are considered as best available multicollinearity diagnostic now how to check auxiliary regressions this the third one how to carry out let us understand this third one how to detect multicollinearity now suppose our equation is y is equal to a plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus b3 x3. In such situation, regress x1 over x2 and x3. See, consider x1 as a dependent variable and run x2 and x3 as independent and you will get some r square. Then make x2 dependent and then run x1 and x3 and you will get ra2 square. Similarly, for x3. And then you carry out the overall regression that is considering y as a dependent variable. So here rm square you will get. Now if any of ra1 square or ra2 square or ra3 square is greater than rm square then there is a presence of multiclobe collinearity. This is known as Klein's rule of thumb. Now to have, how to carry out multicollinearity in EVUs. For this purpose we will go in First of all, quick estimate the equation. I'll write down the price C is bedrooms. C is constant, which we are considering number of bedrooms square foot. Enter. I got the out. I'll go in view. Coefficient, coefficient diagnostics, variance inflation factor. I got the value. Now the value which you have to see is this one, centered VI. This value should be less than 10. Here all values are less than 10, which means that there is no multicollinearity. For more videos on econometrics, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.